Hello all you wonderful, beautiful people. Thanks for clicking on this channel. Today I figured we'd talk about my top 20 favorite Megadeth songs. Like any list, this is just my personal opinion. Uh, and for Megadeth it was pretty difficult because they're one of my favorite bands and I love so much of their work, but then there are quite a few albums of them that I'm just sort of like ambivalent to. So I think I did a pretty good job of getting a little bit here and there from all across their discography. There are going to be some really nice deep cuts here, but I am also going to leave some songs out that you may think are going to be on here. But if you feel like I missed out on something, don't get mad. Just tell me what your favorite Megadeth songs are in the comments below. Anyway. Here we go. Coming in at number 20 is The Right to Go Insane from Endgame. This song is just a great way to end the album, and it's always good to see a really crunchy, heavy, groovy bass riff open up a song. I like how this song is pretty mid-paced for most of it. It's not too fast, it just kind of grooves. You can really appreciate the heaviness of the riffs. I do appreciate the subject matter of the lyrics of going into the mind of someone who's just so burned out from work that they are on the brink of losing their sanity. I really like the guitar harmonies. It sounds like they're harmonizing in fits and that kind of power behind the guitar harmonies complements the tempo of the song really well. You can make songs a bit heavier if you slow down a little bit, and for Megadeth that might be not exactly what you're expecting, but in this case I think it works really well. But just in case you thought the song was too slow for most of it, towards the end it kicks it up a notch and goes up by about 50 BPMs, and then all of a sudden you're in a thrash metal song again. I really love this song for the mix of slow, steady, plodding riffs, and then kicking into thrash at the end. I feel like this song is a good mix of sort of what Megadeth was doing on their album Euthanasia, but then also sprinkling in a little bit of like Rust and Peace and um, Peace Sells But Who's Buying. So you get this nice mix and it feels pretty fresh. Speaking of Peace Sells, coming in at 19 for me is Bad Omen from Peace Sells But Who's Buying. Just because the guitar in the intro of the song is clean does not mean it's relaxing or settling at all. It is such an ominous, sinister opening to the song, which fits the lyrics perfectly. I also love how in the intro of Bad Omen, Dave Mustaine uses pick scrapes really musically as part of the riff. It's just a cool little thing. And by the time the main groove with the bass and the drums for this song kicks in, it is so fast, so primal, so vicious. It just works so well. Gar Samuelson and Dave Ellison working together on this song is just absolutely incredible. And another thing that I love about this song, besides the driving rhythm, the insane speed, the perfect groove with the bass and drums, is the lyrics. Early Megadeth would sometimes dabble in occult lyrics, and it's really nice to see Dave Mustaine sort of take inspiration from bands like Venom or Merciful Fate and do his own take on them. Just gives this song a really sinister, ominous, scary vibe that you don't really get with all Megadeth songs, and I'm glad it's on this one. Coming in at number 18 is Hook and Mouth from So Far, So Good, So What. The intro riff of this song instantly grabs your attention. From the moment it kicks on, you know that this is going to be a really good one. The da-da-dun, 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 da-da-dun. There's just something so commanding about it. This is just another song, too, where the bass and the drums are doing a lot of the driving force behind it. During the verse, there isn't really that much guitar. It's just Dave Ellison on the bass, the drums going away, and Dave Mustaine singing. And that sparing use of the guitar riff means that when it does come in for the pre-chorus and the chorus and eventually the bridge and the solo, it really is effective because we went a few moments without having any guitar. And like most Megadeth lyrics, these lyrics are vicious and scary and angry. But unlike a song like Bad Omen, this is a more real-world problem, a more um, human evil, something that is a bit less fantastical. I love the inspiration from George Orwell's 1984, talking about censorship, the line, if you make a person disappear, no one will ever miss them, always sticks with me. And Dave Mustaine sings those lyrics with a lot of conviction. And by the time the song really kicks in the gear into the fast part, it has a decent solo, but right before the solo it has this really cool alternative picking section. It's more of just an instrumental passage. But when I sit back and listen to it, I'm just blown away by the technicality of it. So for all that, this song's going to be in the top 20. Coming in at number 17 is The Threat Is Real from Dystopia. This song has a really cool intro with some uh, Middle Eastern influenced percussion and singing. And when the riff kicks in, you're just instantly hooked. It's a great way to kick off this album. The riff feels like it could have been a classic Megadeth riff, something from their first or second album, but it's still produced in a way that it feels modern and fresh. This is also the first time we're hearing Kiko Loera play on a Megadeth song, and he fits in perfectly. What's amazing about Kiko as a player is that when you listen to his days in Angra, he's actually dialing it back a bit when he's in Megadeth, uh, but he still is able to capture that style of players like Chris Poland, Marty Friedman, Chris Broderick, he 
knows what the band needs uh, for his solos. He knows how to play to it. He just is an amazing musician and his contribution to the song and this album uh, makes it stand out. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention Chris Adler's drumming on this track. He absolutely kills it. There's a ferocity and aggression but also a tightness to his playing that just really fits with Megadeth and I think that the song itself is good but when you add in all those extra musicians, Kiko, Chris Adler, the Middle Eastern singing, the percussion, it just gives it a different edge. It makes it stand out from other Megadeth songs and that's why it's on this list. Coming in at number 16 is How the Story Ends from Endgame. The song just has a nice chugging riff. It's not overly complicated, it's pretty simple, but it just fits, it grooves, it gives you something to bang your head to and not have to think about too much. The chorus of the song is just really catchy too. Um, I really love when Dave is able to write a good chorus, one that gets stuck in your head, one that's kind of infectious, and this is one of his best in my opinion. Destroying every town, light them up and burn them down. I also really appreciate the lyrics of this song. Uh, it's just talking about war from the point of view of someone who is not a combatant, but is just someone who's in a village that gets burned down by an army that's passing through. It might be a little dark, but that's one of my favorite aspects about heavy metal and this song in particular, is that having lyrics deal with the people who are downtrodden or victims of something or those people and those groups that are marginalized by society and don't always get someone speaking for them, I think is one of the best aspects of metal as a genre. Uh, being a little dark, being a little sinister, but also I feel expanding people's compassion for people they may not have thought about if they weren't listening to a song about them. Going back into the music of this song, I absolutely love the odd time signature bridge where it goes to an acoustic guitar. You have acoustic guitar playing in one speaker and then distorted guitar playing in another. It fits really well and that by the time it goes from that bridge section into the main solo, Chris Broderick absolutely kills it. This is one of his most insane solos and he plays it so smoothly and so effortlessly that he can actually trick you into thinking it's easy when it is obviously not. And you just add a really great outro with the riff and yeah, the song's gonna be this high up on the list for those reasons. Coming in at number 15 is The Conjuring from Peace Sells But Who's Buying. This is once again another example of Megadeth just going more fantastical, more demonic, more supernatural and sinister and it just sounds evil as fuck and it is so fun to listen to because of that. The song feels spooky, threatening, but still inviting, still fun. They once again kind of slow down the tempo a little bit so that you can kind of groove more to the riffs. And also I appreciate that when I first heard this song I had to go look through a dictionary to find out what some of the words in it meant. <laughs> when would I ever need that word in my life? But I found out what it meant because of the song and my curiosity. So. Thanks for that. And one last thing about the song is just, it's a pretty short song, it's only about four and a half minutes, but there are just so many riffs and so many memorable moments packed into those four minutes that it feels as though it's longer, and I mean that in a good way. Coming in at number 14 is Looking Down the Cross from the debut album Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good. Out of all the big four's debut albums, Killing Is My Business is without a doubt my favorite, and songs like this are why. I feel like Looking Down the Cross is an overlooked song in the Megadeth catalog. Uh, I don't feel like it gets the appreciation it deserves. It's sort of more of a deep cut. I like that Dave Mustaine was messing around with his tapping technique in the song. This song does a really good job of building tension. It makes you wait to get to the anthemic part at the end. It just slowly kind of builds an atmosphere. Each section of the song builds on what came before it, but also feels new. By the time you get to when the song's really kicking off around 2 minutes and 40 seconds in, it just feels so much more intense than it would have had it started off with that level of intensity, had it not had the more drawn out, more laid back, more atmospheric intro. Once again, I love Dave Mustaine's evil lyrics. Uh, there's so much rage in his writing and he sings with a lot of conviction like always. He always has a snarl on his voice and a bit of venom and around 2 minutes and 45 seconds into the song there's a line, Now you wish you had a god to stop your demolition, which is just such a trademark Dave Mustaine thing. It's, it's angry, it's sarcastic, it's bitter, it's great. One last thing I want to say about this song is that Gar Samuelson's drumming is really, really tight. It's smooth, it's aggressive, it's heavy, but it also kind of feels laid back. He came from a jazz background before joining Megadeth and it shows. I think that his contributions to the band 
really lent something different on those first two albums. Coming in at 13 is Devil's Island from Peace Sells But Who's Buying. This is the third song on this list in a row to deal with either the devil, God, or damnation. Noticing a little bit of a trend with the early Megadeth songs. <laughs> this song just has such a cool subject matter. Devil's Island was a French penal colony in South America, and I like that Megadeth is able to take that, but then also add in a little bit of supernatural elements to the lyrics, saying like, oh, well, what if it was Devil's Island, but there also is some Lord of the Flies shit going on here, too. Like, it's not a metaphorical Devil's Island. There's actually something on the island with the prisoners there. Just a nice, creepy little story. Once again, it feels as though it was influenced by maybe like Merciful Fates, The Oath, or something. I'd like to see Dave Mustaine taking those uh, inspirations from those more underground bands that he was a big fan of in the 80s. Great riffs, great solos, great bass, memorable, catchy moments. Number 13, Devil's Island. And coming in at number 12 is going to be the first of many songs featuring Marty Friedman on guitar. And at number 12 is Architecture of Aggression from Countdown to Extinction. The song is just short and to the point. It's punchy riffs. This might be Megadeth's best sounding album from a sonic level. The production is just absolutely perfect. Every guitar sounds heavy. The drums are pounding but still not being overpowering. Something I love about the song too is that they have either a solo or an instrumental section after each chorus. They want to play with your expectations while also giving you what you want, and the fact that Marty Freeman gets more than one solo on this song is always going to be a plus for me. And this is also another song that is not super fast by Megadeth standards, so they're able to really just hammer home the riffs and let them groove a little bit, let them kind of go from being super fast and aggressive and uh, maybe a bit too fast that you can't really appreciate them to something that's just more pummeling, something that's just gonna like pound your head in. <laughs> and once again, the song has another really catchy, memorable chorus. Dave Mustaine has some moments where he has choruses that would be infectious. They just get into your head, they're little earworms, and I appreciate that in this song. Coming in at number 11 is Lucretia from Rust in Peace. I could say a lot about this song, but the real reason this song is so high up is Marty Freeman solo. This is one of his best. It's probably my personal favorite Marty Freeman solo, and I really loved learning how to play it. It was quite a challenge. This song is, of course, a little bit slower for a Megadeth song, too. It grooves, the riffs are heavy, it's chunky, it kind of has a swing feel at times, but really, that solo. That's all I have to say. The guitar solo, Marty's solo. It's why this song is so high up, it's why I love it so much. Even though the rest of the song is still great, that solo just kicks it up a notch. It bams it up a notch. He's just one of my favorite guitar players. This is one of his best solos. How could it not be in the top 20? Coming in at number 10 is Countdown to Extinction. The lyrics to this song are some of Dave's best, in my opinion. I love the subject matter. I love that he's taking an environmental stand and uh, standing up for animals that are victims of canned hunts. And I also love the absolute disdain you can hear in his voice and in the lyrics for the people who participate in the canned hunts. I particularly love the way he kind of deals with masculinity and this idea that you have to go out and kill something to be a man with the line, killed a few feet from the cages, point blank, you're so courageous. It just has such a mocking, trademark, Dave Mustaine tone to it and Perfect. I think Megadeth and metal in general are at its best when it's being very socially conscious and kind of wanting to expand people's empathy and give people a greater sense of responsibility to themselves and to the world. Also in the song, every instrument gets a chance to shine. There are, of course, cool guitar riffs, but there's a really nice bass riff. The drums stand out because, once again, like hook and mouth, this is a song where the bass and the drums are pretty prominent in the song. Marty Freeman also gets some cool things to do in the chorus a little guitar lead that fits in. This is just, once again, a song where everyone in Megadeth gets an equal opportunity to shine. Coming in at number nine for me is Euthanasia from Euthanasia. Once again, this is another great Dave Mustaine lyrics, uh, similar in theme to Countdown to Extinction, except this one is more explicitly dealing with how older generations sell out the younger generation for short-term profits instead of investing in that younger generation's future. The riff in the song is so dirty and chunky. It's once again a slower song by Megadeth standards, so they're able to just really dig into the notes with the pick, dig into the strings, just kind of a da 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 It just, it has something that's more heavy uh, to it something that's a bit more plotting. It kind of feels like it could be an Alice in Chains song, almost. You're probably sick of hearing me say this, but once again, this song has a great solo by Marty Friedman. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm going to say that for pretty much every song. <laughs> and once again, the song makes you build up to the chorus. It makes you wait for it for a bit so that when the chorus does come, it's very impactful. And it's once again, a very catchy chorus. So for all those reasons, Euthanasia is where it is. Coming in at number eight is Captive Honor from Countdown to Extinction. This song has a really beautiful chord progression in the intro. The clean guitars are reminiscent of something that Marty Friedman would do on like his second solo album. Once again, this song has a bit of a dark subject matter, but important dealing with the prison system and the consequences of committing crime. The riffs are really chunky. They're really aggressive. They kind of have some chromaticism in them. One of my favorite parts of this song is about three minutes and 27 seconds in. The solo had started out a more traditional Mari solo, but then when the riff changes, it goes into this very bluesy, emotional lick that's kind of descending the neck, and it's just very impactful. It's just perfect for that moment. Coming in at number seven is Hangar 18 from Rust in Peace. It's Hangar 18. It's Megadeth. It's number seven. Do I need to say anything else? I... No, it's Hangar 18. Moving on. Coming in at number six, I'm cheating a little bit. It's Dialectic Chaos and This Day We Fight from Endgame. These two songs together are so aggressive, so fast. It's about six minutes, almost seven, it feels like, that does not let you breathe for a single moment. The riffs are so intense, the, these songs are so ferocious that by the end of listening to them, it can be almost exhausting. I remember the first time I heard this song, I had bought the CD and I was a kid driving back with my dad. We listened to those first two songs and after they were done, I just turned to my dad and said, holy shit. And he just kind of looked at me and was like, yeah, that was intense. I feel like with these two songs, Dave Mustaine kind of expanded on the idea of Into the Lungs of Hell and Set the World Afire, but in my opinion, made a better version of those two songs. Well, a better version of Into the Lungs of Hell. I'm not sure if This Day We Fight is a better version of set the world afire, but in either case, he clearly had that idea for a song that goes into the other to kickstart the album, <clears throat> and I think that this is his best example of doing that. Dialect the Chaos in particular, I love the trading off of solos and then coming together to harmonize. I also really love the riff that is kind of more of a lead, just kind of playing different notes, pulling off on the notes. It's sort of more of a melody line while the guitars underneath are just more chugging. It just all fits really well together. It's never boring to listen to. I've listened to it a hundred times and I still always love it. Okay, so we're in the top five now and coming in at number five is My Last Words from Peace Sells But Who's Buying. This is once again another song that has a great bass intro. I absolutely love the droning of the guitar strings on the eighth notes and the bass and the guitar mimicking each other for the melody in the intro. Although Megadeth always has a lot of energy and aggression in their performances, for the recording of this song in particular, it feels like there was a little bit extra oomph put in there. There's just a unknown factor, an X factor of just extra aggression, extra energy, extra passion in the performances that makes it stand out even when compared to the other songs on the album. And like a lot of Megadeth songs from this era, it makes you work to get to the anthemic part. It doesn't really have what you would call a chorus until the end of the song. And I think Dave Mustaine was really good at writing songs that were designed to build anticipation and to get a crowd of like a hundred or a thousand people to go absolutely insane by the end because they've been waiting for that part in the song where they can chant along or sing along to it. And this is just a really good example of that. Coming in at number four is Tornado of Souls from Rust in Peace. Just like with Hangar 18, I don't really feel as though I can contribute anything to the conversation when it comes to the song. It's Tornado of Souls. You've heard it. I'm sure you love it. It's number four. All right, so we're getting into the top three, and these are my three songs that are just above and beyond any other Megadeth song. I can't always explain why, but I'll do my best. I feel like now is also the best time to say that there's not going to be P-Cells, but who's buying in this list, even though I do love great bass intros. It's just a song I've heard so many times that it's lost its... I've lost my luster on it. Sorry, please don't kill me. <laughs> okay, so coming in at number three is Five Magics from Rust in Peace. This is a cool example of what would it be like if Megadeth was slightly more progressive in their songwriting, if they were slightly more prog, sort of more like Fate's Warning or Rush. There's just something really cool about the song that, once again, they don't do for most of their songs, so when they do it here, it really stands out. It's a really driving bass riff. I love the dissident harmonies, and like Hangar 18, it has solos for days, so I'm all for that. And another thing about the song that makes it really cool is that it's unusual for a Megadeth song where 
the lyrics are more fantastical. It's not something they usually do. If they do talk about something supernatural, it's usually maybe the one or two songs they had where they were talking about Satan. But with this, it's just straight up fantasy. It's not epic Ronnie James Dio, you're gonna go on a quest kind of fantasy. It's more fantasy of like, what if you were just a normal person lost in Fangorn Forest, or in the world of Ice and Fire, or if you were in the world of the First Law Trilogy. You're absolutely fucked, and it's scary. So the lyrics are grim dark fantasy by a thrash metal band that is kind of merging into progressive metal a little bit at times with endless guitar solos. How can it not be in my top three? Like, so coming in at number two is Holy Wars The Punishment Due from Rust in Peace. I have a tendency to kind of not have the big hits or the standout tracks on these top 20 lists because usually for me they lose their luster after a while. Not the case with Holy Wars. This song is so fast, it's so ferocious, it's so unrelenting, but then it still knows to slow down for the midsection to give you a chance to breathe. Once again, kind of like Five Magics, it feels as though this is Megadeth being a little bit more progressive with throwing in an acoustic guitar solo. First time we get to hear Marty Friedman on a Megadeth song and he makes his presence known. It also does a good job of combining the fast, unrelenting, aggressive Megadeth from their more thrashy days, and also kind of shining a light on where they would go in the future with the bridge, where it is a slower, more pummeling riff. It's about five or six guitar solos in this song, so you know I love that. These are also some of Megadeth's best lyrics once again, and I absolutely love the fact that they were inspired by a show Megadeth did in Northern Ireland when Dave Mustaine decided to mouth off not knowing what he was saying, and it resulted in Megadeth having to flee to Dublin in a bulletproof bus. If you don't know that story, go look it up, it's pretty funny. Well, not funny for the riot that happened, but no one got hurt, so in retrospect, it's pretty funny. So you have a song that mixes the best of fast Megadeth and more chunky Megadeth. You have Dave Mustaine's best lyrics that were inspired by one of my favorite countries on the planet. And you have multiple guitar solos from both Marty Friedman and Dave Mustaine just absolutely shredding, showing what they can do. So how can this song not be in the top three? Okay, so what could beat Holy Wars, Hangar 18, Five Magics, all of these songs? For me, my number one favorite Megadeth song is Good Morning Black Friday from Peace Sells But Who's Buying. If you've never heard this song, I think this is without a doubt Megadeth's most evil, sinister, aggressive, metal song they've ever done. The lyrics of the song are so vicious that they border into almost proto-death metal at times. It's Dave Mustaine at his most pissed off. They also borrow again a little bit from bands like Merciful Fate, Venom, maybe a little bit of Slayer, with satanic lyrics that are dealing with a guy who has been possessed by a demon and has to go hurt people. Hurt might be a little bit of an understatement. But with that all being said, this song also kind of borrows from Bad Omen with a more laid-back acoustic intro that kind of doesn't give away how dark this song is going to get, but still builds mystery and builds sort of a sinister, ominous, atmospheric vibe. Once again, like Bad Omen, when the guitar riff kicks in and you get into the thrash moment, it is absolutely vicious and unrelenting. Gar Samuelson's drumming on this song is next world. His fills are so fast but also so clean and so powerful. This song is sort of the stuff of nightmares and I absolutely love it. It's once again a song that is kind of unique for a Megadeth song. They've never done something quite like this before or since. They don't play the song live anymore and maybe that makes it a bit more taboo and makes me love it even more. But for whatever the reason is, Good Morning Black Friday is my number one Megadeth song. So there you go, those are the top 20 best Megadeth songs according to me at the time I wrote this. Feel free to let me know in the comments what your favorite Megadeth songs are, and if you like this video, feel free to subscribe, click the bell, leave a like, all that YouTube stuff. You know how it works, but it would really help the channel and I'd appreciate it a lot. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Peace.